In today's Morning Meds, we're talking about temptation. What is it, what's the source, and how can we resist it? If you're ready, then let's go. Welcome back to Morning Meds, where we meditate on God's word in order to tackle everyday issues that we face as Christians. So if you like Morning Meds, be sure to like, share, and subscribe so that we can make it through this together with the help of God. So what is temptation? Encyclopedia.com describes temptation as a trial in which man has a free choice of being faithful or unfaithful to God. Only secondarily does it signify allurement or seduction to sin. Temptation comes down to following God or not following God. Everything else falls under either one of those criteria. What is the source of temptation? The three sources of temptation are the adversary, the world system, and our own fleshy desires. So we find in James 4 and 7 that we should surrender our will to God and resist the devil and he will flee. So how do you resist? We must recognize our likelihood to sin. Own it. Put a tag on it. That way you can see the temptation coming from a mile away. If you keep thinking that I can stop whenever I feel like it, you will never see it as an issue that needs God's attention. Next, limit access. Even if you have to be like Joseph and leave your coat in their hand, run, get out of there. If you love chocolate and sweets, don't bring it home. This goes for chocolate men and chocolate women. Life does not always present opportunities to limit access or contact. So it's always good to have boundaries set for impulsivity. When you find yourself in a tempting situation, require yourself to wait 10 to 15 minutes before succumbing to temptation. During this wait time, refocus your mind with praise and the word of God. When Jesus was tempted by Satan, he based his decision making on the word of God, not his own desires. This may be just the thing you need to get out of there and stay faithful to God. You got to respect the science. The more you do something, the more you tell your brain to expect it. And the less you do something, the less you tell your brain to expect it. And finally, if all else fails, Lord, repent quickly. Remembering that true repentance is a turning away from, a renouncing of. Sometimes we'll get it right and other times we will get it wrong. But we must repent immediately when we fall to temptation. Stay in the word of God. Don't give up. We all make mistakes. Nobody's perfect. But God's plans will prevail. He knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. So he's not surprised by anything that you have said, thought, or done, or anything that you could say, do, or think. Repent immediately and keep the lines of communications open with the God of peace. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you have given us the word of God to help us resist temptation. God, we want to be faithful to you, Lord, as you've been faithful to us. We know that we won't be perfect and we know that we haven't been perfect, but we know that you are. And in our weakness, your strength is made perfect, God. We love you, Lord. We trust your plan for our lives and we know that your plans will prevail. We ask you, God, to allow us to set goals, always understanding and knowing that it is your will for our lives that we want. We love you, God, and we ask you, Lord, to protect us us from the adversary and we ask you God to help us to keep our minds afresh as it pertains to the world system and we ask you God to make our desires match yours so that when it comes down to us thinking that we think in your way and we do what you want. 
allow us to repent quickly and get back on track so that we can continue to live for you and allow our ministry to show your light to others in the world. Thank you, God. We love you. We bless your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.